Hi, everyone. Good evening. My name's Jen with Slope Garden Center. Welcome to our webinar this evening with Alyssa Venzel from our Slope Boulevard location, uh, the mothership in the city. She is a, our indoor plant buyer at that location, and she also has her own business doing indoor plant design. So we're really excited to have her share her expertise with us today. Um, you know, it's kind of that time of the year where, well, we're getting rain. Um, it's getting a little cooler. We're spending more time indoors. And of course, the holidays are coming up. So uh, we thought this would be a great topic to just sort of uh, just, you know, start, lead off into that time and get ready for, um, you know, bringing plants indoors and some tips on how to decorate indoors and whatnot. Also, this is a bit of a bonus pack because Taylor is uh, behind the camera. So these are the, the indoor dynamic duo from the slope down by the zoo. So really excited to have this team with us tonight. Um, you all should have received Alyssa's outline uh, that would have been attached in the, um, in the reminder email that you would have received about an hour ago. Let me know if for some reason you didn't receive that. I'm happy to send it in the chat. Um, and then let me think. Oh, and then also, if you have any questions, please, you, we're, we actually, we, because it's, you know, Taylor's there and Alyssa's there and I'm here, we thought it would be fun to have a bit more of a conversation. Uh, so feel free to ask questions as they come to you in the Q&A, and I'm happy to feed them in to Alyssa as well as Taylor. And um, this will probably run about a half hour, and but we want to be sure to reserve as much time for your questions as possible, or address as many of your questions as possible. Uh, in terms of our upcoming classes, just really quick, is we do have gardening for the birds coming up on November 6th. And so that's really um, also very important information. Uh, and Dan will be leading that off, and that's 10 a.m. on November 6th. And then after that is getting to know native plants with Joan Pont, and that will be November 13th at 10 a.m. All right, I'm gonna turn it over to Alyssa. Um, you guys are muted. Alyssa, you're muted right now, so you'll have to unmute uh, if you can. But I'm really looking forward to your presentation and hey, thanks so much. Oh, there you are. Okay, thanks so much. <laughs> All right, hi everyone. Happy to have you here. Uh, we'll start off just thinking about when you're looking at your space, how large of a space do you have? Are you filling your whole home? Is it just going to be a little shelf area? Um, that's where you want to start taking your plan. And then next, you're going to want to figure out what your aesthetic is. So is it more modern? Is it more Gucci, boho? Do you even have an aesthetic? Um, those are good places to start. Um, so when you're picking your plants, you're going to want to make sure you pay attention to the light requirements of them. Are they bright light, low light? Do you have large windows? Is it pretty dark in your house? That's going to guide you to choose the plants. And when you are choosing plants, you just kind of want to shop around and see what suits you. So um, browsing is good. Uh, so once you've kind of decided what your spatial parameters are, if you have a really large space that you're picking, um, you kind of want to focus, bring a focal point. So you want to uh, pick a nice large plant and then kind of build around it as a statement. Or if you have minimal space, um, like a little shelf that we have over here, I'm not sure if you can see it, but you can kind of build little vignettes um, with tiny little plants and you can mix in you have little pieces of art that you like to collect, you can kind of build that in, um, create little kind of stories and moments. Um, next on my outline. <laughs> uh, so then you want to think about your pot choices. I really like to mix kind of um, color groups, and in that, you 
size and texture. Um, and you kind of want to build height. So you can either use plant stands or you can use shelving units um, to create different heights that'll create different focal points and just be more interesting to look at. You also want to, um, I like to kind of layer the plants. So you layer textures, uh, big foliage structure, um, as well as color. And then you're doing the same with the pots themselves. You're kind of mixing color tones, texture, size. Uh, Alyssa, can you can you yeah. go over the, some of the plant some of those plants just so we know what you're what yeah. what you're even around right now? Like so what are the names? Thing that could all kind of do uh, like low to medium. The so this palm here can do kind of highlight. So this is a Dracaena warnecki. Mm -hmm. This is a Kentia palm, and an Aurelia elegantissima. Um, you can group things either by the same kind of plant requirements in terms of um, watering and light, or if you have more space in your house where you have like different um, different types of light, you can spread the plants out. Uh, then back here we have a macho fern. We have a Hoya, big bird of paradise. This is a type of philodendron. This is a ficus allii. Love this plant. That's higher light. The higher the ficus is higher light, right? Yeah. So these guys are going to be more uh, bright light, bright indirect. Birds of paradise can definitely take mm -hmm. super highlight. Mm -hmm. um, you can think about hanging your plants. So you can either uh, you know, install hardware in your ceiling to hang. That'll create uh, height if you don't have tons of space for a really large plant. Uh, you kind of draw the eye with hanging plants. Over here, we have a Cleomelie, a little maidenhair fern, a Calathea, another little fern. Those are kind of mixed light requirements. You might want to spread those out. Cleomelie is definitely going to be higher light. Calathea is bright and direct. Maybe mm -hmm. kind of low to medium. We have here a stromancy. This is a um, ficus elastica. This is a euphorbia, super highlight, kind of bright and direct, bright and direct. We have a little tiny version of the um, Aurelia elegantissima. This is another little fern, a blue star fern, another calathea. And it looks like you group the pots too, like in color, uh, sort of, you know, you have the terracotta together and then the, the, the white pots together. I like that. It looks nice. Yeah. I guess it depends on your style. Yeah. Totally. Um, I definitely am more into neutrals and so these are just mixing um, kind of different textures of the same color group. Yeah, and then here we have a Dracaena marginata, uh, really good for kind of structure, good in the low to medium light. This is a ZZ plant, super hardy, good for low light. And this is another philodendron, so philodendrons generally can do at, like medium to highlight. Um, and again, just kind of like building in the same color group, kind of warm, neutral, earthy. Uh, but with different sizes and shapes. So it, huh? Would you like to get a little bit closer to the plants and talk about them more specifically? Oh, I can't hear you, Taylor. Do um, you want us to get um, closer to the plants and talk about them more specifically? Well, I was going to ask, or a little bit more about the the pots because. Um, there, you know, that's a big uh, opportunity to add a design element. And uh, you have all the plants just setting in the pots right now. 
is that recommended or do you recommend to actually plant in the pots or you know is that something to consider when you're designing your indoor space plastic pots so you can repot your plants because they'll all want bigger pots eventually so you can repot them into a plastic pot and then set them in your decorative pot a lot of decorative pots um, don't have drainage holes so you don't want to pot directly in them you just want to set it in um, that also gives you more flexibility as your plants grow you can kind of move them around rather than have a set time pot everything um, they're also easier to move since they're not as heavy if they're filled with soil so generally I'll find a nice decorative pot. If it um, doesn't have drainage, you can put a saucer inside so you can water your plant and drain your saucer afterwards. Uh, otherwise, you can put a saucer and cork mat down to protect your furniture or your um, surfaces. But in general, especially with larger plants, I just leave them in a plastic pot and then drop them. They're easier to water then too, because you can just much easier lift them up out and that's the thing yeah. with indoor plants. In, I, yeah. Yeah. In general, if you can, the plants really prefer to be taken into the shower or the tub or outside and just kind of hose down and give them a good soak rather than watering the pot. Mm -hmm. And then it seems like you have a lot of different foliage textures. So do you, I mean, when you go to design an indoor space, do you like to incorporate different texture, you know, contrasting textures, or do you like to have it be, you know, like, I guess it might, it depends on the space or the aesthetic, right? So if it's yeah, more contemporary. Yeah, definitely depends on your space and aesthetic and what kind of plants you like. Um, I kind of like mixing the colors and textures. It just makes it more interesting rather than looking like, like you jungle, which maybe that is your aesthetic. Um, but if you're looking for more structure um, or kind of like softening spaces, I feel like adding dimension with color and texture really helps. As well as so, size, kind of like different. Yeah, um, definitely. What, uh, so kind of going off of this question is, do you plant multiple plants in a single container or do you like, do you recommend just keeping them in their own individual container, but grouping them, you know, with various foliage uh, contrasts, if that makes sense? Yeah, probably just depends on the container. Larger containers, I would probably keep in their pot. Smaller stuff is going to be easier to uh, transplant, move around. Um, but I would say it's kind of dependent on what the container is. So like in a larger container, you might put like three different plants in one, like a combination pot or yeah. Yeah, you definitely can. Um, you want to pay attention to how big the plants are going to get and how much root space they're going to take up if you're going to actually plant them directly in there. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's definitely a good way to uh, kind of add, mix it up and add interest. Um. I have more questions. I don't know if you want to talk more first or if you want me to just ask the question. <laughs> I would ask questions because it's, I mean, it's very abstract. Um, yeah. And also I do yeah, they like- Yeah, all the kind of examples of how you can- Yeah, I, I love those those plant stands, the wood plant stands. I Those are new to slope in the last couple of years. And it's a great way to just add some height and a wood element. That's a nice contrast to the ceramic, I feel like, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I also love the baskets for that. I feel like they just make it much more soft and warm and mm -hmm. of earthy. Um, and yeah, I'm, I personally don't like everything to be uniform and look the same. So choosing kind of different um, colors and textures and mixing that up it, but still in the same color group right so you have some uniformity um, and you can obviously if you were designing this in your own space you could spread these plants out if you want throughout the room or you can group them together um, depending on how much space you have what the light is um, 
also if you just if you like live in an apartment you have really small space you can kind of utilize utilize your shelves um these are just little tiny pots you can do these are all propagations you, can, you know take cuttings of your plants um and propagate them and use them also as uh, heavier design yeah actually can you hold that can you hold that out because I think that's a cute look to, like it's it's kind of like an indoor farmy look because mm -hmm. uh, and you can do that with herbs and stuff too. I mean, you can have like a little propagation station, but it's also totally. it's it's a fun uh, well, and there's the roots coming out. <laughs> uh, refer back to Taylor's class on being an indoor plant parent to find out what to do with that now. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, but it, I that I think is a cool just design element, um, you know, on a like a kitchen ledge or like a shelf or something, just to have the glass and the clipping. So, yeah, definitely. Um, and then let me see. The oh one part, what was right before the ZZ plant when you were going around there. Do you remember? Uh, probably the Justina Marginata. Oh, uh, yeah. So these yeah. are really good if you're kind of looking for that more like structured, maybe deserty type of look, but they can take low light. Uh, mm -hmm. That is an excellent plant for that space. This little guy is a philodendron. Mm -hmm. So Maybe if you, narrow. there's a question on, you know, if you are doing um, a combo pot of a few different plants, are you with with the groupings that you've put them in there? Are, would you say those plants would be safe to sort of put all in one pot if you wanted to, for example? Like for these right here? Yeah, or even like the small plants on the table there. Like, could you, you know, if you if if you wanted to combine all those plants in one pot, like, are they compatible in terms of water and light and whatnot? Um, I would say like these small ones here, yes. These guys probably not so much. This is going to be mm -hmm. very low water, um, kind of medium water. Yeah, I probably wouldn't do all of these in a pot. Uh, but you could keep them in their containers and put moss over the top of the pot if that's the aesthetic you really wanted. And that way you could water That's them. a good tip. That's a really good tip. So actually somebody was asking because she had uh, a couple plants not work and wanted to know what she could replace them with. But a really good tip is to just keep them in their plastic containers yeah. and, and set them shoulder to shoulder in in a larger pot and then you just cover the top with moss so you don't see yep. all the separate pots and then you don't have to worry about like the water difference and stuff because yeah. you could take you know you could take out the one that needs more water and water it more and leave the other one in and so that's a really good um thing to bring yeah. up um and then so oh do we do all the slopes have the propagation station? I'm not sure. I they definitely they have it at Slope Ball Boulevard. Yeah, they should. It, it, we got a lot of them. So there's an item that we should all have. Uh, do indoor plants typically like to dry out before watering so they don't stay too wet all the time? Definitely. So I would say most plants, you're gonna want to give them a really deep watering and then let the first couple inches of soil dry. There's gonna be varying degrees of that depending on the plant. So for example, the euphorbia wants to dry completely in between waterings, but then something like this little fern, um, so this little fern here, they're gonna to wanna to stay maybe slightly damp and let the first half inch of soil dry. Mm -hmm. But a good rule of thumb is once a week watering, no more uh, for everything. Yeah, and also we've said on, on previous classes, like I said, we, we have recordings of a ton of stuff. So th there's a lot more questions on, on care and everything. And if you wanna go into a deeper dive of that, uh, you can view Taylor's 
uh, webinar last week or when was it Saturday uh, on plant parenting and you know the best thing to do like it's sort of a combination really of what Alyssa is saying in terms of design but also just paying attention to your environment uh, because you know some areas some places in your house are going to be more drafty so is it by a door is it by a fan is it by a heat source right and so you're going to have to adjust your watering based on your own environment because there's not a, there's not the same recipe for any one plant that's across the board you just you know what i mean you just have to you have to adapt it and get to learn do you have a more moist environment you know, maybe then you just water once a week or every 10 days or something. Um, I think that's important when you're choosing your plants. I know, mm -hmm. especially like when uh, interior designers come in, they want a certain aesthetic, but the mm -hmm. space they're putting in might not provide the correct light for the plant. So it's not going to last long term. If you're investing in putting plants in your house, you want to make sure that they are plants that will survive. So mm -hmm. I think it's kind of important to think about what the light requirements are, then you kind of search in those light groups for plants that fit the aesthetic that you want. Because generally there's something that will provide the, the look you're looking for and still work in your space for the light. Yeah, I mean, I see that outdoors with landscape architects and there's a form that they like, but it's not necessarily the right plant for the space. So. Just getting to know your space, yeah. like she, like she's saying, um, because there is, you know, there's plants that can give a similar feel uh, that's more appropriate for whatever your environment is. If it's not, yeah. if it's not a bird of paradise, maybe it's some kind of dracaena, or you know what I mean. Like you can sort of like, yeah, create a similar feel. Um, yeah, I mean, for example, like if you're looking for something big, lush, and leafy. It's mm -hmm. going to take lots of bright light, but if you want something that can take maybe more medium light, there's these allocations up here that'll give you that really broad. And oh, right, yeah. Uh, they could take lower light than a bird of paradise. Can you bring that one out? Yeah. Actually, that's a, that's a fan favorite. Yeah, yeah, um, because yeah, Taylor has this in his room, I think, and people always comment on this plant. Um, so yeah, so you get that same large leaf there. Pretty. Yeah. But again, if you want it higher, you can use stands, you can use little side tables with, if you're wanting that like really tall, lush book. Yeah, that's great. Um, and you're right, it does give a similar feel to the bird of paradise, but it doesn't need that full sun. Um, that's also called elephant ear, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's different yeah. varieties of that, right? Um, Lots of different varieties. Um, mm -hmm. This one's Regal Shield. Mm -hmm. There's also just solid green ones. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Another thing to think about is maybe you just want one like large statement piece. So that could be like a slightly philodendron. Uh, you could do bird of paradise or alocasia because they'll get nice and lush. You could do a ficus florata, um, and that could just be the one focal point. Um, or if you have a small space, you could choose um, just kind of your favorite little pot with a super uh, kind of exotic rare plant that could be a focal point, say on like a little side table. Um, that's another. What are what are the, some of your your favorite ones that you like to when you're doing interior design? What do you find yourself using, you know, regularly? I would say definitely or palms. more frequently. Palms. Oh, palms. Uh huh. Yeah, Kentia palms are. Yeah, they add kind of structure, but they also soften the space. Uh, it's this over here. Yeah, can we see that? <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, just lots of texture, uh, especially in kind of like industrial spaces, they really soften it uh, and they're pretty hardy. 
So that, and that it, casinos, definitely, because they work well in offices where there's lots of low light. Um, and they just add nice, lush foliage. So, those are so they can the take low light? Or what light do they uh, take? Casinos can. Cantia palms can take fairly low light. And when you say low light, how would you describe that or, or medium light? Um, so low light, I would say, is uh, probably like 10 feet away from a window, give or oh. take, or mm -hmm. if it's north facing where it's never going to get any direct sun. Um, medium light, I would say, a little bit closer to the window or um, an east facing window, north east facing window, and then bright light is going to be like western facing, southern facing. Um, or just like a big bank of windows. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, are there any of them that have flowers over there? Or do you typically, do you use a lot, a lot with flowers? I mean, I know you have them in the store. I'm not sure if you have them right next to you. Orchids is a popular one. We Somebody's have at, um, one little lipstick plant that. Oh, there that is. Yeah. Um, indoors flowering plants are generally going to be orchids, bromeliads. There are some hanging plants like that lipstick that will flower. Um, the little these guys, calatheas and um, marantas, which are related. Sometimes they'll send out a little flower, but they're super tiny. Uh, yeah, stuff that'll give you impact maybe will be orchids or bromeliads or peace lilies, but they have a yeah, the peace lilies Taylor's I like. Favorite, the goldfish. Yeah, somebody's asking about the goldfish. There it is. Is the goldfish <laughs> related to the lipstick plant? It looks like it. They're kind of related. Yeah. <laughs> Ish. Uh huh. Oh yeah, Hoya is a flower. They give these beautiful clusters of flowers. Definitely one of my favorite plants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a nice plant. Um, well, th this is, I mean, yeah, I like all, all of your arrangements. I like your favorite plants that you picked out. I mean, like I said, this, this, we just wanted to do it just a short and simple to the point class on just some different design elements to, to think about when you're, um, when you're putting, you know, putting ideas together for your space. I agree with Alyssa. I mean, I, I well, okay, so you can do, uh, so I've seen sort of like boho designs that have a really cute shelf with a bunch of different colors of pots and that can be really nice. Um, I personally also like a little bit more neutrals and uh, doing, you know, contrasting textures like the basket with the ceramic and, you know, the wood sand and stuff like that. It's a nice little grouping. Um, so I would say just most yeah. importantly is, um, you know what you like. And so when you come into store, you can shop by color group in terms of pots, plants that stand out to you. And then obviously ask anyone in the store, um, what the what light requirements are so that's super important if you want to keep them long term um, just thinking about those elements and not to feel intimidated by choosing plants i mean if the plant speaks to you that's the one you should get so if, if what would you recommend so if somebody you know really wants to add plants like what uh what sort of information should they gather before they come into the store and talk to you? Because obviously, you know, our staff can help you pick out plants and pots and stuff, but like, it might be helpful to just have a little bit of information prepared before you go into the store so we can be more effective in helping you pick out your plants. Totally. I would say number one, figure out which way your windows are facing. Um, mm -hmm. That will totally determine um, what plants you can choose from. So sometimes people come in and they're like, 
I want a plant for my bedroom, but I've never been in a bedroom. <laughs> so right. you just need to know the, yeah, the direction their windows are facing, if they have any windows, super low light or no windows at all, you know, the choices might be pretty limited, but we can still find something that can work. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so. Measurements maybe, measurements of the space that, that you have, you know, how big you want the plant to be, that kind of stuff. Yeah. What yeah. kind of feel you want, like you said, like contemporary or tropical or, you know, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, if you want it kind of more industrial looking or you, you know, if you have, like we're out by the beach, do you want it kind of beachy looking? Uh, and we definitely have their plants and pots that'll fit every different aesthetic. Uh, one really quick thing before we close up, because you had this on your outline and I, I was very curious about it because you said something about adding little like found objects or something to, to the space. So <clears throat> what do you mean by that? Is that, you know, how, how would you uh, describe I, in that? In my house, I have like so many different shelves. So I have little shelves kind of on shelves, shelves on shelves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you can even use the shelves, like large abalone shelves to keep air plants in. Um, if you use like crystals or you like going antique shopping, you find little knickknacks. Uh, you can kind of mix those in, especially if you're doing um, like the little shelving unit. Uh, you can kind of mix those in with the the pots um, for a like small scale. Um, yeah, it's mix fun it to add. With, oh, it's just that uh, kind of like personal touch, right? Totally, and you're kind of mixing it in with your own. Um, interior design so you know obviously your furniture is going to have a certain aesthetic and you'll have little end tables and knickknacks that will go with that and kind of mix that in with your plants as well yeah I mean I've seen too even just like pieces of driftwood you know mm -hmm. or you could do like crystals or uh you know marble you know have some sort of like marble jar I mean it just depends like just sort of like or starfish or sand dollar or, you know just yeah. like look around um I remember I was doing a class once with my and my son was little and he wanted like a little uh lego clone trooper like on the shelf with the plant I mean you could have a you can have it be fun with the kids too right yeah totally. so if you're, if you're doing like the kids room you could have a little Lego thing there or, you know, a little pony thing or something, you know, <laughs> so, so they, so they, they relate to it and it just sort of accents that room. Yeah, definitely. And if you're thinking about plants for kids, there's lots of plants with uh, fuzzy leaves. So they're really good for the uh, tactile engagement, you can touch the plant. Yeah, tons of possibilities. Um, I do want to note because Taylor teased us with that air plant. We are Taylor will be doing a uh, air plant 101 class in December, I think. Uh, so look for that on our, the Talansia. So he will be doing mm -hmm. a Talansia 101 class, and we'll go deeper into that because that's kind of you know that's kind of like its own topic um Definitely. but Alyssa I really appreciate your time and your expertise this is a good I think just sort of intro to sort of like you know what we have to think about when we're planning our space and thinking about the pots and the size and what kind of feel and whatnot going forward and um if we didn't for some reason get to your question or when you're going through your process, if something comes up, feel free to email me. I'm happy to pass them on to Alyssa, any questions um, or just you know ask her and email you back. <laughs> um, because we're here to support always on your plant journey. And of course our staff at all of, all of the stores are completely willing and able to help you. Um, like as Alyssa said, you know, 
take take sort of account of a couple things before you come into the store because then we'll be able to help you more efficiently and effectively um, bring some green inside and you know enjoy the your indoor plants right absolutely all right well cool thanks so much i hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your wednesday evening uh thanks Alyssa, definitely for your time like i said and taylor for behind the camera it's i'm really glad that you guys set this up at the store because i think it's it's fun for us to see sort of you know yeah. what's on the what's on the floor what does it look like you know when you go in the store and this is basically you know, each store is kind of different. Each store kind of has its own set of plants, but you get the idea. There's a lot to choose from, a lot of variety, a lot of different, you know, pot, pots and, and whatnot. So come on in and we'll help you with your indoor plant selection. Absolutely. Okay, thanks. Have a good night. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. Bye.